These are actually a joy to look at, and the closer you look, the more detail there is to find. I'm sure that anybody with a Class 66 is already eyeing these up for something to put behind those venerable workhorses of the privatised railways. A big hello to you. I hope I find you well. It's so great to see you. I'm Jenny Kerr, welcoming you up here to Weir Yard. And today we're going to be taking a look at the all new coalfish wagons that have come from Acura Scale as a follow up to their HAA family of coal hoppers, which were part of their Powering Britain range. Now, these were an obvious choice for Acura Scale because the prototypes made good use of redundant underframes from withdrawn HAA wagons, where the bodies were absolutely shot, the wagons were reaching the end of their life being replaced by some quite huge coal hoppers, but when the underframes still had a bit of mileage left in them, EWS did exactly what BR had done back in the 1980s with the taupe wagons reusing old coal hopper underframes to make these, and they came up with a great idea to produce some spent ballast wagons for engineering works, and these were actually pretty successful, so much so that they lasted to the present day, and are invaluable for any modeler who wants to model the modern image post-privatization scene. And Acura Scale have very, very kindly sent over a set of three of these for us to take a good close look at here on the channel. And don't forget that we've got an affiliate link down below that takes you to Rails of Sheffield if you like the look of any of the items that you see in today's video and want to pick them up for yourself. So come with me in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Browse the full range available at their website today, tramfabrique.co.uk. Additional support comes from Rocar Prototype Models, where detail, accuracy, and value for money go hand in hand. With their debut model of Safepack Auto Racks wowing model railroaders alike, now is your chance to order these in road names and configurations to accurately reproduce auto rack workings from 1974 to the present day on your model railroad. Order today from rocarmodels.com and see the full range for yourself. So I'm really, really looking forward to these Acura scale coal fish wagons. Do they live up to expectations? Are they as good as all of the previous Acura scale releases have been? Is this going to be the wagon that breaks the trend or is it going to continue on the road to success? Come with me and let's take a good close look. Here on the channel we recently did a video reviewing the all new tooled Acura Scale HAA type merry-go-round wagons and some of their derivatives that have all been offered by Acura Scale as part of their Powering Britain range of wagons. It really was an area that a lot of people had clamoured for a decent representation of the HAA family of coal wagons, and Acura Scale certainly did not disappoint. Not content with doing the HAA, they also ventured into the area of some of the alternatives, including different suspension options that represented the HAA type hoppers throughout their life as they were upgraded and changed. And with the great range of liveries on offer, they really did cater for everyone who could have possibly wanted one of these iconic British coal wagons. It has to be said though that at the same time, Acura Scale tooled up for the CDA China Clay Hopper conversions, and that kind of hinted that they were prepared to make this the definitive tooling suite. And to that end, they also have now brought out the MHA wagons. Now the story behind these was that uh, towards the end of the lifespan of the HAA merry-go-round hoppers, uh, they were starting to be replaced with the huge 102 ton uh, thrall type coal hoppers that really did increase the payload to dead weight. And 
there were a number of the HAA type wagons that were being withdrawn from traffic that still had quite a bit of life left in the underframes. And just like British Rail did before them when the HTV hoppers were withdrawn and a number of them were found to still have reasonable underframes under worn out coal hopper bodies, they were made into engineers wagons conversions. With those wagons, certainly very long in the tooth by now, it was EWS that produced from them the 33.1 ton ballast spoil box wagon, which drew a little bit from the very austere design of the MEA type wagons that themselves had been produced from cut down and withdrawn HEA type hoppers. The thing that I really do like about the Acura Scales way of doing these is they kind of tool up to do every possible variation in a family of wagons and it means that nobody is left asking why couldn't you have with a few tweaks to your tooling have given the option for x y or z type wagon that were quite similar in this case there are no cries of that the internal packaging is this two-stage blister and we've seen that a lot with other wagon releases inside we've got the three wagons laid out and also a tiny bag of additional detail parts and these are for if you wish to add all of the buffer beam hoses that go between these wagons and certainly this is something that any modeler that wants to either have these in a display case or has alternative means of coupling them together that doesn't interfere with all of this can really go to town and make something special from these wagons. Underneath the blister pack, we've also got a little leaflet here with an image of one of the MHAs in use with spent ballast and a little potted history of the fleet. There were 11,161 of the merry-go-round type hoppers built between 1964 and 1982, with all but 162 of those constructed at Shildon. By 1991, the fleet strength was still quite impressive, actually, at 10,887 examples. So that's almost all of the fleet that had been built. But they started to tail off quite quickly after them. And the various TOPS codes, are such as the HAA, HBA, HCA, HDA, HFA, HMA and HNA, were all still extant with around 10% of these stored for repairs or conversion and Acura Scale has produced models of all of these different variants. So it is quite a detailed history actually here, taking the wagons through from the initial prototypes done by British Rail in the very late 1980s right through to the present day where these wagons have passed to the ownership of Deutsche Bahn. On the other side we've got the exploded diagram and I love showing these because it very much shows that this is a precision model. It is not a toy and if anybody is complaining about the price, as so often people do try to, just look at this and imagine that if you had to build this as a kit yourself and finish it to this incredible standard, you'd be very, very taxed. And if you had to pay somebody to do that for you, well, that's going to take up a lot of time and become quite expensive as a result. I will point out, though, that uh, one of these did arrive with the scourge of the tension lock couplings is that these do have a habit occasionally of unclipping, but they're quite easy to clip back in. Each of the wagons comes individually wrapped, and this is a lot like getting a new smartphone. So let's put on some sexy music and just enjoy the peeling back of that new plastic. First impressions are very good. Now the EWS Maroon is really quite nicely done, picked out with that yellow, uh, which is very much like the Wisconsin Central livery of the time, which it was based after. You can see there on the underframe, we've got all of that detail that we had on the HAA wagons. And of course, that's no surprise because these uh, MHA wagons were built on the redundant underframes from these merry-go-round hoppers. And so consequently, the brake rigging 
has all of the provision for the bottom opening doors, even though that is now no longer present on the wagons. It's a really great idea to make full use of a tooling suite in this way. With the new body on top, the underframe shows that new lease of life that very much mirrors what British Rail and later on EWS did with these wagons. The interior is finished as if smooth metal, and actually I really do quite like this choice of a slightly rusty brown for the interior. It's a good starting point for any weathering that you might like to do, but similarly in this X works condition, it doesn't look wrong. And it's something that I know from having looked at a wide variety of wagon types, that the choice of the interior can make or break how a wagon looks when trundling around in your trains. We've got that same really quite refined brake gear and the W irons and the suspension too has all the air gaps exactly where it needs to be. We talked about this in the HAA review, but look at those springs. They are really, really nice with a remarkable refinement of all of those leaves in that spring. There are air gaps all the way through. And just as I rotate that wheel, you can see the bearing journal inside there rotating. And they are actually quite smooth running. I don't feel any remarkable drag on these. And I also really like the brake pads that are fitted on these. And actually, interestingly enough, these appear to be, let me just see now, we've got, um, just trying to get my head around this. In terms of brake rigging, we appear to have disc brakes on one side of each axle. And this is correctly um, reproduced here. So you can see what would have been wear pads. These would have been removable, acted very similar to how the disc brakes on a car would. And that really improves the stopping potential of these wagons. On the back too, we've also got, you can just see there the caliper and the wheel rotates within those. And we've got the representation of the pads on the back. That is really quite refined. Look at that. And then, as per the prototype, blank on the other side, because there's no brake calipers to be seen on those. Likewise, when we get to the other end, we've got the correct pattern brake pads on one side and none on the other. And you can see just down there, the calipers in place. So that, again, mirrors the uh, HAA family origins of these wagons, if we just look there, comparing the underside. Just like the HAAs, we've got this uh, really quite clever, uh, quite a smaller self-centering cam that the coupling pockets sit into, and that is spring-loaded, so they return to the central position, and that really does help with a wagon with this longer wheelbase on tighter curves just to prevent the buffers from pulling each wagon off the track. We've also got sprung loaded buffers just as we saw on the HAA family and these have quite a pleasing motion to them and I do like that silver, the very bright silver there as you see of the uh, actual shank inside the housing and that is just as per the prototype. And then we've got the black buffer heads, which does look really, really good as a starting point for any weathering. Separately fitted lamp irons here on the end, and they are actually quite robust. They appear to be metal in origin. Captain, they appear to be metal in origin. Apparently, Jenny thinks she is on some kind of Star Trek. And more than strong enough to be used for their intended purpose. Looking to the livery application, that yellow band across the top is really, really crisp and clean. There's no fuzziness. And then when we look to the overhead warning flashes, I can just about make out the writing on that. It is incredible how well defined the printing has become. We've got a really crisp TOPS code data panel there with the MHA, 33.1 ton load and the tear weight of 13 tons and 860 kilograms with a wagon number of 394716. 
EWS is crisply applied in the center as per the prototype. There are some additional printing on the sole bar. I particularly like just deep inside there. We've actually got printing underneath the detail on the wagon sole bar. That is actually incredible. Talk about going above and beyond. The brake lever looks like it could be manipulated, but I couldn't actually just get that to drop down. But certainly that is really quite nice. Again, just as we said on the HAA family, this brake gear is very, very fine. Look at that scale thickness, pretty much. But that doesn't come at the expense of durability. And it has to be said that actually it's strong, but prototypically looks really, really good. I like that cylinder underneath, just picked out in the silver with the red additions. There's little details like that that really do make these come alive. And again, that underframe detail. Look at all that. And you can actually see the wheel through there. So many separately fitted pieces. These are actually a joy to look at. And the closer you look, the more detail there is to find. Turning to the other wagons in this pack, very, very similar in terms of the uh, finish. We've got, again, there's that plate down in there, right through, just inside the frame. We've got a running number of 394941 on this particular one. And then third wagon in this trio, again, different running number but a lot of other details are very similar, representing how these wagons were churned out from the actual conversions. Slimline tension locks fitted as standard. These just go into that NEM pocket. Just one of the couplings had a loose arm, you can see here. I did try and refit it, but it's something I've seen this from all manufacturers. Sometimes the, um, the clip doesn't really quite clip them in place and they become very prone to falling out and that does seem to have afflicted this. But it's not a big deal and it's really easy to change the coupling if that is something that bothers you. Running these on the track, they performed incredibly well. I added them to a long air brake freight train and they really didn't seem to give any extra appreciable drag to the locomotive that was pulling them. And I'd wager that you could get quite a substantial train of these before there was any real risk of the locomotive stalling. And indeed, if you put these behind a Curascales Class 92, I suspect that the couplings would quite literally pull out of the NEM pockets between locomotive and first wagon long before the locomotive ran out of pull to pull the train. These wagons are also a perfect accompaniment to the EWS and Deutsche Bahn liveried versions of the Class 37s that are forthcoming from Acura Scale and I'm sure that anybody with a class 66 is already eyeing these up for something to put behind those venerable workhorses of the privatised railways. Through point work, the wagons were completely unfazed, and I had these running through a variety of the different challenges here on Weir Yard, with no issues detected at all, and I'm really, really pleased for the performance. I could imagine these with a custom fitted load and a little splash of weathering, and they would be perfect. It's certainly another great offering from Acura Scale, and one that will be well received by the modern image modeler. So we turn now to the scores. First up is build quality, and pretty much everything that you see here is quite robust. The only thing that was a minor niggle was when I got them out of the box, one of those coupling hooks had come loose and wouldn't clip back in properly. But as I said in the review, it's not really a major issue, but uh, I'm going to reflect that a little bit in the score with a 9.9. .9. On running quality, there really was nothing to fault. The wagons ran perfectly in the test train and took in all that Weir Yard had to throw at them, including the torture test track and a wealth of different bits of point work, including double slips and scissor crossings. 
It should also be said that the coupling heights were perfectly aligned with the other wagons in my fleet. And it's something that from time to time you do find releases ready to run where the coupling heights just won't match. But we didn't get any of that problem with these releases. So I'm going to give these a full 10 out of 10 because I really couldn't fault them. On DCC fitting and innovation, well for this it's purely innovation and I love the way that Acura Scale have taken on board the fact that they could produce these using the underframe that they were already producing for the HAA family of coal hoppers and it's a great addition to the range that plugs a gap in the modern image wagon fleet and it's really great to see. That brake rigging again is very much simply a work of art and I particularly like some of the smaller details like that wagon plate that's tucked away behind other detail and when you think about it that means that there has to be a lot of thought that goes into the decoration and assembly process to be able to do that. So overall it's a really great wagon and I'm going to give it a 9.8. On accuracy and quality of finish these very much look like the prototype. There's nothing really that I can fault about them. And even down to sprung buffers and that additional pipework for the buffer beam, everything is there. So much so is the accuracy of this model that Acura Scale are even prepared to give you quite a good detailed photograph of the prototype that you can compare the two to. And basically, if what the wagon is, matches up with this picture then you just know it is right. In this instance pretty much there's not a lot that can be faulted. So I'm going to give this a 10 out of 10. On value for money we can find these listed at £74.95 for a triple pack and that puts them at just a shade underneath £25 per wagon and in this day and age that is actually a very attractive price point. It means that you can build up a fleet of these reasonably quickly and there are four different packs available split evenly two each between EWS and Deutsche Bahn as well and you can mix and match these for the later period although if you're only modeling EWS then you'll have to stick with the EWS liveried only wagons. So I'm going to give this a 9.5 and that gives us a final score of 48.2 which again is another exceptional score for another exceptional product from Acura Scale. Even though these are modern image and very much squarely post privatization I really was impressed with them. Now it has to be said I don't model post privatization British railways so these are a little bit out of my wheelhouse but even so what I see here, there is a lot to like, and you can't help but appreciate the wagon as presented by Acura Scale. I can imagine that an awful lot of modern image modelers are already drooling at their screen, and certainly these are a really exceptional piece that has been produced by Acura Scale as an addition to their HAA tooling suite that is going to be much appreciated. I can certainly wholeheartedly recommend these wagons. I hope you really enjoyed today's video and found it informative and we do have a link down in the description box that takes you to Rails of Sheffield if you like the look of the wagons in today's video and want to pick up a set for yourself. There's four different versions available, two in DB livery and two in EWS and if you're modeling the later era it's okay to mix and match those because the liveries did tend to persist. These were engineers wagons after all. And don't forget as well to leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you if you've got first-hand experience, either of the prototypes or maybe you've already got a set of these from a curious scale. What have your experiences been? Share them with other modelers and help them form an informed choice on these wagons. Also, we've got our full merch store available for you to peruse. You can be resplendent in one of our great Gronk It Up t-shirts and the whole range of Billy's replacement speakers wear. So do check them out today. We've also got the Monday Club Wagon, which is available for you to order, but do hurry. 
Uh, there's a link in the description box, but they are selling out quickly, and this does promise to be another great success. And thank you for your continuing support on our special commissioned wagons for this channel. But until next time, this is me, Jenny Kirk, saying you take great care of yourself. And until then, happy modelling. Bye for now. Today's video is sponsored by Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders designed to be fully compatible with every manufacturer's locomotive. Visit train-o-matic.com to browse the full range and see what they've got suitable for you. Additional support comes from Rocar Prototype Models, where detail, accuracy and value for money go hand in hand. With their debut model of Safepack Auto Racks wowing model railroaders alike, now is your chance to order these in road names and configurations to accurately reproduce auto rack workings from 1974 to the present day on your model railroad. Order today from rocarmodels.com and see the full range for yourself. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon, and an extra special huge thanks goes out to. Anthony Kidson, Offshore Allen, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Sparky107107, George Botterini, Chris Moss, Robert Steers, Sam Yates, Dale Williams, John N. from NC, NYMR ish, Jonathan Foster, Peter, Clifford Ison, Larry W. Grant, NI Railways 4000 class, Ian Coulson, Alan Dickerson, Eddie Papair, Karen Nicholl, Medwin Williams, Crossways Point Junction, 3B Rail, Jennifer Horton, and James Beckett. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.